Good afternoon to everyone. Well, here in Argentina, it's our afternoon. Maybe for some of you, it's your evening, your night, or your early morning for some if you're in, in the West Coast in the United States or in Vancouver. So, well, after a few weeks of making some webinars, of well, actually, this hour, it's our week number eight that we are doing this since uh, we have the situation of the COVID all over the world. We wanted to start sharing with you some, some of our technology and to start all, also showing the faces of the people who is behind of developing this technology. And one of our, our main issues or one of the questions we, we used to receive is why, why is important to be a miner? What's, what's mining? What's the hashing power? What the miners do? Why there are a, mining pools. Uh, so for this, we have with us uh, Martin Medina. He's the head of, of mining at, at RSK. So we thought it was a very good idea to, to have him here and to explain the, the basic things about, well, what is mining. So we have this webinar called From Bitcoin Mining to RSK Merge Mining. So we have to, to have a very good explanation and, and to have, well, a webinar where you can you can ask whatever you want. So I would like also to remind you that if you want to ask a, a question, just answer it or ask. Sorry, ask ask it and we'll we'll try to answer it. And well, we also wanted to invite you to to our next webinars. Uh, right now, here on the chat box, I will write the which are the landing page where you can you can sign up for them. And also to remind you that this webinar is being recorded. So if anybody of you uh, is joining us or one needs to leave, they can also watch it later on demand on our YouTube channel that it's youtube.com slash RSK smart. So with us here is Martin Medina and I'll be assisting him with the questions and, and everything. So very good luck and good afternoon to everyone. Bye bye. Well, thanks, uh, Fran, for the intro, and welcome everyone to the RSK Mining webinar, which we called From Bitcoin Mining to RSK to RSK Merge Mining. So, as Fran said, we have a we have a pretty a pretty nice agenda for today. We're gonna start uh, understanding a little bit of the basics of Bitcoin mining, which many of you may know, but it, but it, it will be a good starting point to then introduce the uh, way RSK merge mining works. And then uh, at the end, we're gonna see a little bit of RSK merge mining in action. And finally, we're gonna have, we're gonna have a space for your questions regarding uh, any of the topics we, uh, we talked or introduced today. So with no further introduction, uh, we are gonna just jump to the first topic of my afternoon, which is basically Bitcoin mining. So what is Bitcoin mining? Let's start by its definition. So Bitcoin mining, it's a process that allows transactions as part of the block to be confirmed and then added to the Bitcoin blockchain. That's the definition I found, which I, which I really like, and, and I think it tells a lot. It tells a lot about what it does, but it tells nothing about how it does. So that's why now I'm going to introduce the actors, and we're going to uh, we're going to see a, a diagram where I'll be explaining how all this flow and how all this transaction validation and Bitcoin network securitization occurs. That's the most important thing that we're going to treat in the next slide. But first, the actors. So the Bitcoin nodes, basically, who are the Bitcoin nodes? Well, the Bitcoin nodes are the other members of the Bitcoin network, where they all talk to each other and they have different responsibilities. One of their responsibility is to accept, for, for example, is to accept transactions from users. Basically, it could be an exchange or it could be someone with its own uh, hardware. Whoever wants to generate a transaction in the Bitcoin network, they just need to interact, I, I would say talk, <laughs> with the Bitcoin node in order for that to happen. But, and then the Bitcoin node, it's also responsible for holding the, the Bitcoin blockchain. Basically the, the whole history of the Bitcoin transactions grouped on blocks. That's basically the, the Bitcoin blockchain. So each of the nodes will have 
a copy of the blockchain and will be able to interact with users. And at the same time, we'll have an interface to interact with other Bitcoin nodes, generating what I already call the Bitcoin network. So in this interaction with our, with our nodes, what, what do Bitcoin nodes do? Well, they basically exchange information. They basically exchange once a Bitcoin node has a new transaction, it just relates the transaction to the network and say, hey, to the other nodes, hey, nodes, I have this information, I get this transaction, so maybe you can you can add it to your pending transactions, which is in a structure which is called mempool in Bitcoin, to your pending transactions, and whenever you, you are going to build a block, please insert that transaction into the next candidate block. From, from now on, that's what Bitcoin nodes do. Not all of them, we're going we're gonna to be focusing mostly on Bitcoin mining nodes, which are the ones that are connected to the mining pools software. The mining pools software have they have different responsibilities that we're going to understand uh, further on, but mainly I would call them an, an orchestrator. That, that's what they do. They orchestrate the interaction between the Bitcoin node, which we, we've already seen some of, the, of its responsibilities, and between the uh, what we call mining hardware or miner. As, as uh, let me let me rephrase that. So the mean, the mining hardware, also known as miner, I will be calling it with both uh, both names in this presentation. It's uh, basically a piece of hardware that knows how to do one operation, and that operation is proof of work. Proof of work. It's the effort that needs to be done in order to in order to uh, generate a valid proof that a, for a, for a block in the Bitcoin network, that's proof of work. Now, then, we're, then we're gonna go deep into that concept too, but basically you can, you can understand the mining hardware as a machine that it's designed to do in a specific operation in order to obtain a valid proof of work. So basically we have the, the, the two ends, we have the Bitcoin nodes on the side and we have the mining hardware or the miner on the other, and they have the orchestrator or the mining pool software in the middle. So let me just jump to the next slide and you're gonna see what I'm talking about. So basically these are, these are the actors and you have there a couple of arrows and letters that I'm gonna explain what do they mean. And this is basically their interactions. So when I, so before I just said, okay, we have the, the Bitcoin network, which is a cloud because it represents many Bitcoin nodes inside of it. And then we're gonna have for the purpose of this explanation, we're gonna have this uh, simplified uh, drawing of a Bitcoin node with one mining pool mine, and a couple of mining hardware, like more like Apple probably, which is from mining hardware one until mining hardware n. So basically, how does this work? Basically, it is the Bitcoin network, the, the cloud you see over there, it has an, it has an, an, an arrow that's that means that it just talks with the Bitcoin node, it just comes and goes. So in the, in the previous introduction, I said that the Bitcoin network is actually receiving transactions from users. So users connect to the Bitcoin network or to a Bitcoin node, transactions, transactions are related to the network and sooner or later they reach the Bitcoin node that we have in this example, which is that uh, square called with the Bitcoin node uh, name in it. So the A, basically the A interaction, which is, a, is the Bitcoin node that talks with other Bitcoin nodes and receives the transaction to be added to the, uh, to the mempool. Once the Bitcoin node gets the transaction, what does it do with it? Well, it just has a mempool with all the candidate transactions. I mean, transactions from myself, transactions from Fran, transactions from other people that actually uses the Bitcoin network. So with these transactions, what we do have is a pool of transactions, of pending transactions awaiting to be included in a block. And who is responsible for that, for querying those transactions? Well, that's the mining pool. The mining pool, actually, as you can see here in the, in the B uh, interaction, the mining pool uses a, a method which is, a, which is called get block template. And the get block template basically tells the mining pool, okay, these are all the transactions. Feel free to use them. 
in order to build a block. So the Bitcoin node just holds transactions with no specific order and nothing, uh, and nothing more than that. And the mining pool is the one responsible for querying those transactions and building a block. So the mining pool queries the transactions, as you can see over there in the interaction B. And once the, it has its the transactions, it uses a certain algorithm, there are many of them, to actually sort the transactions and put them inside a block. So one of the popular algorithms basically is to sort them, putting, uh, prioritizing, let's say, the transactions that uh, pay the most first and use the least amount of space. So that's, that's one of the algorithms, but well, the mining pools can implement different algorithms. Since that's, uh, since that, that's, that's a piece of software uh, they use. So, and I'm mentioning mining pools. So what, what I have here, the, that circle that says mining pool, it is, since this is a component diagram, then the mining pool over there is, is basically a piece of software. But there is also, what you probably may know from the community of Bitcoin, the mining pool, the company. So the mining pool software is run by a company, which is a mining pool, which is, of course, the one that's behind all this. So we have the mining pool software and the mining pool, the company that runs, that runs this. There are many, many famous mining pools in, in the Bitcoin community. And I'm not going to mention <laughs> any of them, but, but, but you probably can find them on the web. And going back to my explanation, and after this, uh, this important distinction between mining pool software and the, and the companies that run it. So let's focus once again on the mining pool software. So here we have the mining pool software, and I said, okay, the mining pool software asks for transactions, get the transactions, and builds a block. Okay, and that's it? Well, that's not it, because it needs to find a valid proof of work for the block. And how, do, how does it know when the proof of work is valid? Well, because when he asks for the transactions, he also receives an information which, is, which basically tells a certain threshold that, it must, that must be fulfilled in order to generate a valid block. And that threshold is called, it's called a target. There is also another concept in Bitcoin that is used that it's probably more, uh, more intuitive which is the difficulty concept. Difficulty means how, how difficult it is to generate the proof of work for a block, how, how, many, how many times more difficult it is to generate proof of work for a block than it was for the first Bitcoin block many years ago. So difficulty or target, both concepts, one, one is the, the, the reverse of the other, is the inverse of the other. And, and basically, you can understand this as, OK, the mining pool gets transactions and gets a certain threshold. And, the, and then if it, he finds a proof of work that fulfills that threshold, then that, that, it's, uh, that it's over the, the threshold, then you got your mining block, which is valid. So perfect. And, so, and I'm talking about proof of work, but I'm not going into the uh, into the algorithms that actually are used for doing the proof of work. Well, the algorithm that's used for doing the proof of work, it's a, well, it's a, it's a hashing algorithm, and it's a SHA-256. So basically, the proof of work process is you grab information from the candidate block, let's call it candidate block, which is the one that the pool built from the transactions received by the Bitcoin node, and you build a candidate block. And the information on, in that candidate block has empty slots that can be filled with different values. And by, added, by, by changing these values in the slots and hashing all that information with SHA-256, you, you get a value. And then you compare that value to the target or the difficulty. And if it fulfills it, then you are good to go. And if it doesn't, then that's not going to be a valid block in the Bitcoin network. So basically, that's what we have here. So we, we, we receive transactions from the Bitcoin network, put them in our Bitcoin node, the pool asks for the transactions, build a block, and now it's going to look for some valid 
proof of work for it. So how does it does this? Well, remember that I told you before, we got the mining hardware, and the mining hardware is the one that knows how to do this. So basically, the mining pool, here the circle, just talks to the mining hardware one, the N, or whatever, and tells them, OK, guys, I got this. I got this, this job. I need you to start hashing and trying different, um, different values on these slots that are empty in order to see if we get a valid proof of work. And that's, what ha that's what's going to happen now. The mining pool sends the least amount of information required for the mining hardware to do the hashing, and the mining hardware starts working. That's basically what it does. So once the mining pool, so how, how do they connect? How do they talk to each other? Well, there is a protocol that's called the Stratum protocol. And that's the one they use. I'm just mentioning it if, um, just in case it, 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 it recalls someone, uh, someone something over here. But basically what it, what it does is that protocol is represented through C1 or CN, depending on the money, how well you're talking to. So what's going to happen in here now is that we have the, let me see, is that we have the mining hardware working and working on finding a valid proof of work. So suppose the mining hardware one finds a valid proof of work. So what happens next? So he says, through the trading protocol to the mining pool software and says, okay, here it is. I got, I got a solution for you. And it just uh, sends the solution to the mining pool software. That's, that's what's happening in C1. So he first received one piece of uh, work, and then and now it's sending it back to the mining pool once he found a solution. So this solution, now it's in the mining pool. So the mining pool checks the, uh, what the mining hardware is saying is true. He, he, he checks that. It's actually a valid proof of work. And once it finds it, once it checks that, and if it's okay, then it's just uh, add that, that value to the block, to the block which is not a candidate block anymore. Now we know that it's a valid block. So that valid block, once again, the mining pool talks through uh, D over there at, in the drawing and sends that block to the Bitcoin node. The Bitcoin node, once again, does the third check <laughs> In this uh, of the proof of work and some other some other conditions on the block in order to make it valid, right? And once we have that, we are just the we are the Bitcoin node is going to relay that block into the Bitcoin network, and that block is going to be valid. So that's pretty much how this all happens. But now you're probably wondering, okay, so we have all these actors here. So, so, so nice. They they all interact with each other. They are they are doing work. They, they are spending resources on setting up servers on uh, on energy in order to have the mining hardware running and all that stuff. So, what's the incentive to do this for? Incentive. It's basically the that Bitcoin these days has a has a block reward. That means that every time you find a valid solution for the proof of work, for a valid proof of work, right? Then you get an earning, and that earning it's these days after the halving you probably know from last week, it's 6.25 Bitcoin. Plus the amount of transaction fees that are included in the block, because every time you send a transaction to the Bitcoin network, you need to pay a fee. So basically, and so a block it's it's just a set of transactions. Those transactions have fees. Then you sum them up, and you get the transaction fees of a block. So transaction fees of a block and the uh, Bitcoin reward these days, it's what it what makes, it what generates the incentive for miners to work. Then in all these, in all these, uh, all these actors, they all get uh, a share of that, for instance. So the, the model of the, of the mining pools is that they, this is also important, is that they, they pay for the mining hardware per share. Basically, there are, you remember that I told you that in B and D, the, in B, there is a difficulty. So, so Bitcoin node is sending a difficulty to the mining pool. Perfect. So that's, it. that's what network difficulty. But then the mining pool needs to 
needs to share another difficulty to the mining hardware. But that's not the, the Bitcoin network difficulty. That's, a, that's another difficulty, which is called the pool difficulty. So with this, so what, what is, so how do they relate to each other? So the, the pool difficulty, it's way lower than the network difficulty. And it's just a value that is set by the pool in order to receive candidate solutions from the mining hardware on a, on a certain uh, flow. For instance, the mining pool says, I want to get six solutions for the, uh, six solutions per minute. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send the mining hardware a difficulty value so that he send six solutions, six candidate solutions, which are called shares per minute. So that's why, because otherwise, if, if the difficulty, if the mining pool would share the Bitcoin network difficulty to the mining hardware, then that would be, that would be a super difficult value in, uh, to, to obtain. And they, would, they wouldn't be receiving any candidate solutions because as, as we all know, the, the difficulty to obtain a block in the Bitcoin network, it's, it's super high these days and it won't, be able, it won't be achieved by one mining hardware. That's why we have tons of them working together and grouped in mining pools because difficulty is it's it's high. So basically, those are the two difficulties we have uh, we have in the game now. I would say. And now you're you probably you're probably asking yourselves and saying, okay, well, so but we're getting difficulty from the Bitcoin node, which is the Bitcoin difficulty, and you're getting another difficulty, which is way lower to the mining hardware. So if the mining hardware finds a solution for the way lower difficulty, how how would that make it to be an a valid network difficulty uh, value someday? So that's, so that's the first question. And, and the answer to that is the hashing algorithm is random. Since the hashing algorithm is random, once the fact that you, that you, are, uh, that you fulfill the, the difficult, uh, the pool difficulty, it tells you nothing about fulfilling the Bitcoin network difficulty. Maybe you got a super high value and it, and it would work, or maybe not, maybe not. Most of the times you don't, but that's how it works. So, so far we've been going through, uh, through some concepts. I think that there are questions here in the chat. So let me, let me see. Okay, perfect. So that's a, that, this is going to be a spoiler, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer it uh, now. So the question is, I'm going to read it in English. So how can I use a, an ad miner S9 uh, mining hardware to simultaneously mine BTC and RSK? So as many of you know, we're here. I don't know if I'm, I think that my connection dropped, but I'm back. So what so I was- you, We are listening to you. Perfect. So, okay, so I, what I, I was gonna reply this question over here, which says, uh, how can I use an admirer S9 equipment to simultaneously mine BDC and RSK in what we call merge mining? We're gonna see it uh, in the next slides. So how can you do it? Well, basically you need to, um, to connect to a mining pool that does merge mining with RSK. Since merge mining, as we are gonna see uh, sooner, it's, um, it's implemented on the mining pool software. So if you connect to a mining pool, the company that actually supports merge mining, then you're gonna be able to be, do, to be doing both. And I think I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna keep moving with the presentation and then, and then I'm gonna jump back into that and probably at the end of the presentation just uh, talking about which pools are doing merge mining these days and how, how you can reach them in order to, to do merge mining with uh, RSK. So if there are no further questions about uh, where we've come so far, I'm, I'm just gonna move on. Well, basically these are the, I just wrote these concepts because I, I've talked about most of them in the previous slide. 
So we talk about, uh, you remember I, I talked about the hashing algorithm, which is uh, SHA-256. Well, in Bitcoin, it's actually double SHA-256 in order to, in order to, to not incur into some uh, security problems if you use just one uh, hashing round. That's basically why we have a double. I mean, but it, it was not that relevant for the for the previous uh, presentation, but it, but it's something that is that is worth knowing. We have introduced the concept of uh, proof of work, and um, and we didn't uh, get to the concept of Merkle tree, which is uh, which is an interesting concept, and and maybe we can we can onboard that right now. So the concept, so Merkle tree, it's basically it's basically a tree of hashes. And uh, transactions are represented by a hash. So whenever you have a transaction, you can you can have a hash that represents a transaction. And all the transactions in a block are built are added to what is called uh, a Merkle tree, which is basically a tree of all the hashes in the block. And then that tree has Merkle root, which is basically what goes into the Bitcoin header, saying, "Hey." I got so because so, the Bitcoin block has a, a format of a Bitcoin header and the transactions, and basically in order to to check that a transaction actually belongs to that, then you get you get the Bitcoin header, you go there and you check for the Merkle root, and if it matches with all the hashes of the transactions, then you get a valid block. That's something that's used to validate blocks in Bitcoin, and we're gonna use it in Merge and That's why I'm introducing it right now. And then, well, we have the concept of of hash rate which is related to target difficulty and all the concepts that are down there. So the concept of a uh, hash rate or hashing power, it's also called, it's, um, it's basically the of a certain, uh, certain uh, piece of equipment, uh, minor hardware or, or the network to do hashes. I mean, for, for example, as, as Alvaro asked, I mean, if we just take an adminer S9, well, an adminer S9 has, it does, uh, I think that 13.5 terahashes, 14 terahashes, depends on the model, uh, per second. So that's, um, that would be the, the hash rate or the hashing power of that piece of equipment. Then if we have tons of them working in pools and tons of, and, and many pools in the network, we just add them all, and we get the network hash rate. That's what you probably see in the in, the, in some Bitcoin stats sites. I mean, these days I think it's around a hundred, a hundred extra hashes. If I'm if I'm not wrong, we're gonna jump into that afterwards. Also, we talk about target, talk about difficulty, and we and there is there is a, there is a remaining concept which is target adjustment or difficulty adjustment, which basically it's what allows you, since Bitcoin has blocks, has a, a target of generating blocks once every 10 minutes, then what happens if you, if you now have 100 extra hashes and tomorrow you plug 50 extra hashes extra, so you're getting 50% more hashing power in the network. Well, then there are gonna be more people working towards finding a, proof of, a valid proof of work and the difficulty needs to be adjusted because otherwise otherwise everyone will be finding blocks every five minutes and that's not what the network uh, wants so the difficulty and the target value is not fixed and it changes in every certain amount of blocks in order to adjust to the new hashing power that is working on the network that's basically how it works and these are the main concepts for bitcoin mining and um, up to now we're we're done with bitcoin mining we're gonna move on to aeroscape merge mining, which is what, it, what got us here in the first place. So if there are no questions, I'll, I'll just jump to the next slide. Okay, let's go. So aeroscape merge mining, finally, we got here. So let's let's go through the definition, the same, the same thing we did with, uh, with Bitcoin uh, right at the beginning of today's webinar. So, aeroscape image mining, it's basically a process that allows aeroscape blockchain to be mined simultaneously with Bitcoin blockchain. This allows transactions as part of a block to be confirmed and then added to the aeroscape blockchain. So, probably the second sentence uh, recalls you something. 
I mean, it's the same process. It's the same. So that's that's the goal of mining, basically. It is to allow transactions as part of a block to be confirmed and added to a blockchain. In this case, it's the ERC blockchain. In the previous case, it was the Bitcoin blockchain. The, 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 the interesting thing about the ERC merge mining process is that it allows the blockchain to be simultaneously mined with Bitcoin. And we're going to go deep into that in a couple of minutes to understand what simultaneously means in here. The same thing as before. So we have the actors, which are now we have a new actor. We have the ERSK nodes. We do have the Bitcoin nodes, the mining pool software, and the mining hardware. So the three last bullets of that list, you already know it because I, I just went through them. But the first one, it's the one that's actually new. And that and that's that's the ERSK node. That's it, that's the one that represents the ERSK. The ERSK blockchain. So let's uh, let's talk a little bit about what's the responsibility of the ERSK nodes. So the ERSK nodes are somehow similar to the Bitcoin nodes in the responsibilities they have, because they are the ones that provide an interface for users to generate transactions. They are the ones that talk to each other in order to share these transactions and these blocks and other uh, network information. And they are the ones that provide an interface for miners to get a new work and actually work on it. And after that, submit a valid block. RSK nodes also hold the, um, the RSK blockchain inside of them. So so that's 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 the main responsibility of an RSK node. So you probably now would be asking, okay, so why do we have RSK nodes and why do we have Bitcoin nodes if they apparently do the same? Well, they don't do this, they exactly the same. I mean, because since RSK, RSK it's a, it's a smart contract platform that brings an extra uh, an extra tier of functionality to to Bitcoin. So in Bitcoin, you can only transfer value in in RSK, you can also run smart contracts with all the benefits that we that we know it brings. So that's why we have a, we have RSK blockchain, and well, that's why we have it in um, we have it related with Bitcoin in one point, which is merge mining. The, the RSK protocol and the RSK network it's also related in some other points, but I'm gonna I'm not gonna talk about them today. So. This is Bitcoin mining, this is the definition, and we're going to move forward. And maybe this drawing recalls you something too, because it's the same drawing as for Bitcoin. But we are now having the RSK node and the RSK network added to it. So the same, let's, let's, let's uh, tackle this from the same point of view as we tackled the Bitcoin explanation. The RSK network basically receives the transactions from the users, and then it just, um, a node in the network there in the cloud receives the transaction from the users, and then it just arrives to the node of this example, which is the uh, square box that says RSK node, through an interaction which is R. So the RSK node gets these transactions, and the same way as Bitcoin, I mean, it just holds the transactions in what we call, uh, in a data structure that we call um, that we call a transaction pool that has all the pending transactions. So once it has the transactions, and here comes one of the differences between between RSK and uh, and Bitcoin, basically, which is how does this work? So in Bitcoin, you remember, if you remember well, then the transactions are sent to the pool, and the pool just sorts them somehow and puts them in a block. But for merge mining, this is not the case. For merge mining, the transactions are actually prioritized and the block is built inside the RSK node. And then, then it, the work is, is summarized through hash. You may remember that in Bitcoin, it was the same thing for a block, it was a hash. So you have a hash that represents the, that block that has been built by the RSK node and that it is still pending to be valid. So that's a candidate block and it's not valid yet. Why it's not valid? Because RSK, because that block needs to have valid proof of work. And here's, here's when merge mining comes in. 
So for now, you have a block that needs to be validated. OK, in order to be validated, we need to provide some way of validating. There are many methods. I mean, there is a proof of authority, proof of state, proof of work. So RSK, in order to be able to do merge finding with Bitcoin, it just picked proof of work. Basically, proof of work with and, and, and one, requ one requisite for being doing merge finding with Bitcoin is that proof of work is that you need to have the same hashing algorithm. So in order to get a valid proof of work for RSK, what you need to have is miners and a mining pool working on double SHA-256 hashing algorithm. So that's a, that's, a, that's a condition for doing merge mining. OK, but now, what's the, what's the trick behind merge mining? I mean, what's the magic of merge mining? Well, the good thing about merge mining, and now I'm going to explain how this happens, is that basically the RSK node, well, not the RSK node, is that merge mining is a mechanism that allows you to put that hash, the one that represents a block for RSK, and we call it hash for merge mining, to put that hash inside a Bitcoin block. So whenever you do work to validate a Bitcoin work, a Bitcoin block, you're validating the RSK block at the same time. So what does this mean? Well, this, have, this is a strong implication that says, OK, with the same software, the same mining hardware, and the same cost and, uh, and with no performance issues, we are just reusing the work to provide a valid proof of work for RSK also, not only for Bitcoin. And that's a huge thing. That, that's what merge mining brings in, in here. So, and, and, and that's its main goal. It's, 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 uh, it's super important. And then, then we're gonna, now we're gonna focus a little bit more on how that happens. And then we're gonna, we're gonna see what are the incentives for that. So basically, once you, where, 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 um, where did we get at? So we get at, okay, there is a user transactions, RSK network there in the cloud, then it goes through R and the RSK node receives the transactions, builds a block, hash it, hashes the block, obtaining the hash for merge mining. And once it has the hash for merge mining, it just shares that to the pool, along with the, with the network difficulty. The same as Bitcoin, but this network difficulty, we're gonna call it the RSK network difficulty. So far, we have three difficulties that we know. We have the Bitcoin network difficulty, we have the RSK network difficulty that I just introduced, and we have the pool difficulty, that's the one uh, that is used in the C1, CN interactions over there in the diagram. So basically, the RSK node now shared the, through the S interaction over there in the drawing, through, uh, through the S interaction, it shares the the hash for merge mining and the difficulty that it that, that must be met in order to get a valid proof of work. So okay, how does this work then? So the pool receives that hash and needs to add the hash somewhere in the block. So that hash is added as an output in the Coinbase transaction. It should be the last output of the Coinbase transaction. This is of course something that does not affect at all the uh, the Bitcoin the big, the Bitcoin performance. I mean, it just takes I don't know uh, a couple of bytes extra in the block and nothing more than that. And it's also on the Coinbase transaction. So so why on the Coinbase transaction? Because that's a transaction that it's always added to the block. That's a transaction that, as I mentioned before, pays for the rewards of the uh, of being uh, of, of of presenting a valid proof of work. Um, a valid proof of work. So basically, when you find a block in Bitcoin, there is the first transaction that says, okay, this pay to the address of this guy, this are um, the 6.25 uh, Bitcoins plus a piece. So, and so, and, and, and that's how it works. And then on that transaction, you just add a piece of information extra that says, okay, and this is the RSK hash for merge mining. And so from now on, you probably, uh, you probably see that now if we add, we just add that information over there, then that information, it's now part of the whole Bitcoin mining process. And whenever a mining hardware over there, the one, the end, the two, or whatever, just finds a solution, it just can submit the solution back to the mining pool, check it for Bitcoin first, of course, 
and then just check if that solution also fulfills the RSK, the RSK difficulty. So I know you're probably wondering, okay, so, so, so what's the ratio between RSK difficulty in, in, compared to Bitcoin and to the pool difficulty? Well, it's, it's, it's kind of in the middle. I mean, it's, it's not as high as the, as the Bitcoin pool difficulty, but it's not as low, of course, as the, as the, as the pool difficulty. Why? Because, uh, because of two factors. One of them is that RSK has a target block time of 30 seconds compared to the 10 minutes of Bitcoin. So, and the other thing is that uh, nowadays, RSK, uh, RSK network does not have as many hash power as Bitcoin network. So, I mean, it's, a, it's, it's around 45 or 50% of Bitcoin networks hashing power we have these days. We're gonna see that uh, in a while too. So going back to the drawing, we have, we have the, the whole flow and we are, we are now, now stuck in the pool with a solution that needs to be checked to see if it's a candidate for RSK or for Bitcoin. If the solution is a candidate for Bitcoin, then it just, get, it just goes through D and then through E and it goes to the Bitcoin network, that's a block, the miner gets, it gets the money and keeps mining. That's it, the same as before. But if the solution actually also works for RSK, then it goes through the T interaction over there and reaches the RSK node. So I know you're probably wondering, so how, how's the validation of this done? So first the, first the mining hardware checks for checks if the solution fulfills the pool network, the network difficulty, it sends it to the pool. The pool checks for the Bitcoin, it already did, and now checks for the RSK and sends that to the RSK node. Once the RSK node gets that solution, it just basically needs to check it. And, and how does it check the, the solution? Well, it needs to check uh, different things that I'm, I think I'm gonna have that on the next slide. So let's assume that the RSK node checks the solution. The solution is correct. And when it's correct, it is accepted. It's gonna be a new block in the, in the blockchain and that, it, and that is gonna be stored in that node and relayed through the U interaction to the RSK network. So let's uh, so let's move forward to the next um, to the next slide and there and there I'm gonna I'm gonna talk a little bit more in depth on how the RSK node validates this solution that gets from the mining pool software. So in order to uh, to summarize and then talk a little bit more about what we've seen now, we have the let me go a little bit forward. Okay, perfect. So we have the um, the block, the RSK, the RSK block, which is as as we already mentioned, created in the RSK node. It's a then you then that's a candidate block or a mining block, and the, and it rep it's represented by a hash for merge binding, and then it becomes a chain block and or a, a valid uh, solution once it reaches the uh, it has a valid proof of work. So that those are the the, the concepts that we've been through regarding the RSK block. And then we have the mining pool. So you may be wondering, so is there a, for, a predefined format in order to add that piece of information inside the, um, inside the Bitcoin block for merge mining? Yes, it is. And that's the, what we call the world famous uh, tag, which is RSK block. I mean, those words in, uh, in, in, in binary, of course. And then, uh, then a hash of 20 bytes, that's the hash for merge mining, and some security information, which, uh, covers the remaining 12 bytes. So this is 32 bytes plus a couple of bytes from the RSK block uh, word in binary. And that's pretty much all the uh, amount of space that merge mining is occupying on the Bitcoin block. And now we have a couple of, well, fortunately I have this, uh, <laughs> I have these concepts over here because I, I, I haven't talked about the work refresh time yet. And then what we call also difficulty magic. Well, difficulty magic, it's basically what, what I mentioned. I mean, we have three difficulties. They all have, uh, the Bitcoin is the highest, the RSK, it's somewhere in the middle between the Bitcoin and the pool difficulty. That's the difficulty magic. And what's the work refresh time? As many of you know, the, uh, or, or not, but I'm gonna introduce it now, the, uh, the Bitcoin pool talks to, let's go back, talks through uh, 
the, the mining pool software talks to the hardware and sends new jobs every certain time. Every, every time a block is, uh, is found, of course, it needs to refresh the work, but also needs to refresh the block every time the, um, there are new transactions. So, and, and that in Bitcoin happens between 30 and 50 seconds. But now you're probably wondering, okay, so you said that the RSK node has a 30 seconds uh, target time for its block. And now the mining software pool, uh, on, on a best case, it just refreshes the hardware on, um, on 30 seconds, every, every 30 seconds. So, so then, then it's not enough to refresh the RSK, the RSK work, and maybe the mining the mine hardware will be working on all jobs for RSK, which is something that we definitely don't want. So that's why the work refresh time needs to be adjusted in the mining pools in order, in order to also refresh the work of the mining hardware every time you receive a new block from the RSK network. So that's the work refresh time. I mean, we've done tons of, of performance tests in order to be sure that this does not affect uh, Bitcoin mining performance at all. And, and unfortunately, it doesn't. So that's, that's why merge mining can work can work so can can work like this, and and this is why also uh, and mining mining pools the companies are confident in us in and supporting match mining because they know that it, that that it's, it just brings an extra an extra revenue without incurring into performance any performance loss or any extra cost. Now now we're gonna talk and and I. I get your question there pending, uh, Agustin, about what's the incentives to build a new block in RSK. So I'm, I'm gonna tackle that pretty soon. But first, let me go to the details of how the block, the, it's, it's validated into the, uh, into the how, how a solution is validated into the, into the RSK node once it's, it comes from the mining pool. So, what we have in RSK block, RSK block has a, a, a pretty similar structure to a Bitcoin block in, 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 in referring to how the information is spread out over there. I mean, there is a header, there are the transactions, and there is a, a thing which is called anchors. I'm not gonna go deep into that, but basically you have those three sets of, of information and, and, and the transactions is the same thing as, as Bitcoin. I mean, not the same, the same. They don't work the same way, but the concept is the same. And the header has, a, it's also like a, a summary of what comes in the block. It has a Merkle root for the transactions, the same as Bitcoin, but for the RSK transactions and so on. And it has the three very relevant fields that I'm gonna talk about. There is the Bitcoin header, the Bitcoin Coinbase transaction, and the Bitcoin Merkle proof. Why do we have this? Because we need to, because we need to validate that actually what the mining pool is sending us it's true I and mean, because the mining pool now it's saying okay i got this bitcoin this piece of this bitcoin block which i used to generate a valid proof for merge mining okay so how, how are you going to prove that well this is the block we could just get the block or, or some fields i mean it's not the whole block these days but it, it doesn't matter we just assume that we get we get a, a full bitcoin block and there we need to we need to check that the that the proof of work is valid and that it has the merge mining the, the merge mining hash. So what do we do? We just go to the Coinbase transaction on that block and check if there is the RSK block and the hash for merge mining and the security information over there. So okay, perfect. It, suppose it has that. Now we need to also validate that that block has been uh, has fulfilled the difficulty that we ask. So that's the second step. So now we, we check that the block is for merge mining and now we check that it, it just fulfills the difficulty. So we are done? No, we are not done. Why? Because we also need to check that the Coinbase transaction of that block actually belongs to the block. I mean, it's not that I get the Bitcoin header, I get the Coinbase transaction and I just say, okay, the difficulty, it's okay, yes. The Coinbase transaction has the merge mining, the merge mining information, yes. That's it. No, that's not it because that condition function can belong to another block. So how do we check this? 
Well, the commit transaction, it's one transaction of the block. It's, a, uh, it's literally the first transaction of the block. And um, since I explained before, there is, there is a way of proving that a transaction belongs to a block, and that's through the Merkle tree, and what we call a Merkle proof. So basically, we just uh, get all the transactions for the block, add the commit transaction, create that Merkle, that Merkle tree, and check if the Merkle root matches what it what came what came what came in the Bitcoin header. So if both things match, then that's it. Then then after checking the, those three conditions, we can ensure that that block is valid for the RSK network. Then there are other RSK related validations for the block to check if it's valid. But regarding merge mining, that's the that's the main things that we need to validate. And now as a, as Augustine was asking, it's like, okay, so you said that for mining a Bitcoin node, we have a block reward and we have um, the transaction fees. Okay, so the RSK model, it's, uh, it's different. Why? Because RSK uses Bitcoin as a, as a coin. Actually, it's a smart Bitcoin, which is packed one-to-one -to, -one to Bitcoin. So, this means that RSK does not issue any new um, any new coins of any type, so there is no there is no block reward. Well, if we if we if we just set a, a parallelism uh, an analogy with with what happens in Bitcoin, so there's no block reward, but there are transactions, and that's where the uh, the revenue for the miners come in RSK. So everyone that does merge mining then it just gets uh, rewards for the transactions on the block. So uh, the more transactions the block has, the more reward the miners get. And that's, uh, and that's basically the incentive to, to build a new block and, uh, and, and to validate it with, uh, with proof of work. So if there are no more questions, I'm gonna jump in. We're, we're just uh, very close to, to the end, as you may see in the, in the slide number. And uh, I'm now going to do a, a quick demo of what I of what I told you. I mean, let me. So we're going to see the hashing power of the network, and then we're going to see how this link that I explained before, the one the one of the Bitcoin block having the hash for merge mining for RSK, it uh, can actually be seen in a Bitcoin explorer and in an RSK blockchain explorer. So. We're gonna see we're gonna see that and then we're gonna see the mining specific information that I told you before. Thanks, Fran, for sharing the links over there. I'm gonna uh, quickly uh, share my browser in order to uh, in order to demonstrate what I what I recently told. Let me enable screen sharing. And there is um, So hopefully now you are looking at my, uh, uh, my Chrome browser over there. And what you can see over there, it's the, um, it's the RSK network these days, basically. As, as, as I already mentioned, I mean, the, 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 hash, the hash rate, uh, it's over there. It's a, the, the rocket with the rocket uh, uh, drawing. It's a, it's a comparison. I mean, if, if now we do have 43, 0.4% of the Bitcoin hash rate mining RSK, which is pretty close to, I mean, it just, it just flows. I mean, it's not, it not, it's not a steady value. So, which is uh, pretty, pretty near to what I said that we are usually between 45 and 50% of the Bitcoin network. And, uh, and, that, and over there you have the difficulty of the network, as I mentioned, the average block time, which is the target, which is, as you see, very close to 30 seconds also. And we have the uh, the average hash rate in exahashes, which is 36.6 these days, like right now, literally right now. And over there uh, on top, you have the last block miners, which is, uh, which you can already see that, that, that F2Pool is now is mining with us. And there is another mining that we that we don't know, but that's the address of, of him. So, and there are tons of other like statistics from the network over here, uh, but regarding mining, that's the most important over there. And let me go back to, to that. And now I'm gonna show, show you the link. So here, what I have is 
B, let me close that, that add. <laughs> and here what we got is a, it's a Bitcoin block, right? So this Bitcoin block has been, uh, I mean, it's an old one uh, because I'm using, I'm using it since uh, in another presentation, but it's, it was transmitted by Slash Pool, a pool that, that's also doing merge mining with us. And as you may see here, you get the Coinbase transaction, right? So, and all the other transactions of the block down here. So the Coinbase transaction is the first one, and I'm gonna go to the Coinbase transaction over here. Okay, and here it says, okay, well, it's Coinbase information to my mind by slash, and you have the, you have different outputs over here. So one of these outputs, of course, not the first one, because the first one is the one that pays to slash for mining the pool, but even the, either the second one or the third one, it's gonna be the merge mining uh, information in the Bitcoin block. So I already know that it's, that it's this one because I, I I remember that RSK block, it, it, it's a 52, 56 in hex, but I'm gonna, let me prove that. And so I'm gonna go to the RSK Explorer, to the block that actually was merged mine with that Bitcoin block. And this, this is the block, this is, on, here you have all the information, I mean, the, the version network where it happened, I mean, the difficulty, the total difficulty of the network, and, uh, and, and many and many other things. So I'm gonna and here I'm gonna jump to the uh, mining tab over here. And as you may see here, you have this. You have the the uh, aforementioned hash for merge mining. So I'm gonna copy this value, and I'm gonna try to see if it's somewhere in here. Okay, there it is. Basically, I just. I, I already have it uh, prepared. I mean, here it's, let me, let me do it just for the sake of the demonstration. I just pasted the value that I copied from the other tab. I'm gonna remove the, uh, the, oh, the zero X in, in the beginning and here you are. So this value that you are seeing here that, that's, uh, that's highlighted in orange, then that's the hash for merge binding. And what you have before is what we call the RSK block codified in, like in binary. So this is so this is merge mining in action. This is how it works. You can you can go and check the slash pool blocks in Bitcoin and and all with all of them will have the uh, the hash for merge mining for RSK and you can also go and check the F2 pool blocks and the same thing doing the same exercise that I did here. And what we have here also are the other the other uh, fields that are received by in and are used to validate uh, to validate the, an RSK block, basically, which is the Bitcoin merge mining header, the Bitcoin, the Coinbase transaction, and the Merkle proof. So, and this is uh, this is the Coinbase of the miner. I mean, this is a slash Coinbase in RSK. So, let me stop the sharing of that. There it is, and I think that we will. You are still looking at the presentation, am I right, Fran? Me... Perfect. Okay, so so that's merge mining in action. I mean, there are many other like low level things that we can that we can that we can show, but for the sake of this of this presentation, I think that, that this this shows enough. I mean, we're, we're and we, I don't want to run out of time also, so. Just to wrap up the, the presentation of today, let me just jump to the resources. If you wanna get to know more, now, now that you know what merge mining is, you can jump into the mining site, which is mining.rsk.co, and there you'll find tons of, of information, like what's the, so what, what are the incentives rather than the economy incentive for the Bitcoin miners to do merge mining? I mean, basically it's, uh, they, it's, they, they, they help the sustainability of the whole Bitcoin network, and that's what we all want. I mean, that's part of the, of the vision. That's why we have, uh, we have RSK on top of Bitcoin and not RSK on top of another coin or with its own coin. So there is that. I mean, there, there is also some, uh, some information about the use cases that may be interested for the Bitcoin community. And there is a, there is a, a little explanation of first mining too. There is a, 
a revenue calculator. I mean, if you're a miner and you're looking at this and you want to know, okay, well, if I just jump on doing merge mining tomorrow, how much would I, would I earn? Well, there is a calculator. You just go over there, and that's, uh, that's going to tell you how much you're going to earn per day or per month. Uh, I, think, I, I think that it's per month. So, so that's, that's pretty much the mining side. Then, then, and then there is like a hard tech documents on merge mining. There is another tech document on how the rewards for merge mining are, are paid, uh, after how many blocks, and, 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 and tons of, of extra information that now that you know what merge mining is, you can jump in there and take a look. And it's, uh, and it's pretty interesting to, to learn, well, at least for me. So and then, you, then there is there is more information about if you it's linked in the mining side, but you can go to the developer portal of the of uh, of the company where you have the uh, more explanations about mining, explanations about how to actually if you are a mining pool, you're gonna find uh, explanations about how to uh, to adapt the code of your uh, of your mining pool to do much mining. If you are a mining pool and you use some of the most popular software, we've adapted for you. So you're going to be able to find that in the mining.rsk.co site too. The reference implementation of the pools with, uh, with the merge mining plugin, as we call it. It's not a plugin, it's just code over there, but, but, it's, uh, but, but that's it. The, the, the concept is like a plugin. So and uh, last but not least, if you want to reach the team behind mining, you can reach us at mining at uh, iobilabs.org. Uh, so you just hit us with an email, and uh, we'll reply as soon as we can. So let me jump to the last slide, which is the thank you slide. I mean, well, thanks for thanks for attending or for watching this uh, record this record afterwards. I mean, it's, it's the same thing uh, as as frontal and. Uh, I'm Mark Medina. I'm the responsible for uh, for mining in, in, in RSK. There you get my LinkedIn. Uh, that I'm always there if you wanna if you wanna reach me. And if you if you don't have LinkedIn or if you wanna reach me by email, you can jump to uh, Martin at iobilabs.org, and that's me behind that email. So, well, hope you enjoyed this, and I think that we have some some time for questions. If there are any, uh, Fran, I don't you you tell me. Well, hi, I'm, I'm back here again with you. Um, yes, I, I've seen some questions, but I believe the, that you answered them during during your webinar. Uh, one was about the incentives, and the other one about uh, using simultaneously an Antminer S9 equipment for, for mining. Um, and also, well, Sol, uh, well, hi, Sol, Sol, she's a developer advocate. She, she works uh, in, in RSK and at ILB Labs uh, in Brazil. She, she's there uh, and she also hosts many of our webinars. She was asking if we, we can share with, with them uh, some of the blog posts. And uh, I shared a few, I think. Uh, so, well, Martin, thank you so much for, for bringing us uh, with our your knowledge. And for all of you, if you also have any questions, you know that you can, well, you can write directly to him, to Martin at iobilabs.org or at mining at iobilabs.org. And also uh, some, some new feature we have at our developer portal landing page is a chat that it's open the 24 hours as well as Gitter if you have uh, at some technical questions. Uh, you can write us there. I'll share with you the link right now. Um, so thank you so much. And also well, uh, to invite you all to, to navigate through our landing pages and through our pages to see well, from well, blog posts, job opening opportunities, um, and you know, to start educating yourself because all the, all what the, the technology we are developing is for for educational purposes, and also for for trying to to people to to get to know and to to understand better what is behind block, blockchain technology. So I think that well, that the mining uh, pillar it, it's a very important one. So I think that the, with this first webinar that it's an introductory one, uh, a lot of questions well will 
will probably get to you, Martin. Uh, and if not, well, you can watch it back later. Uh, as I, I said at the beginning of this webinar, we will upload it at our YouTube channel in a few days. So if you had to leave or you have to, you want to watch it later, you can do it. It's up to you and on demand. So thank you so much for for joining us. Well, thanks, Fran, and then thanks, thanks everyone. I hope you hope you enjoyed. And of course, as as Fran said, said hit me or the team with questions uh, whenever you have them. We'll be happy to to help. So thank you, and well, have a good afternoon at least here. Okay. Well, thank you all. Bye bye. Bye bye.